what is going on obscure mike people it's me it's bark i'm back and better than ever not really probably not but i am back and i do have a special microphone for you guys it's a diy build as you couldn't tell by the description i've got a ten dollar ten dollar condenser microphone from amazon with that aokio like ak60 build the at2020 like build very good very metal very heavy very solid metal rock and this had a crap crap capsule in it and a crap crap pcb board worst thing ever let me show you this got some red foam in the head basket but yeah it was a side address condenser microphone and yes the title gives this away too but what we did with this microphone is a la the aston element we turned this into a phantom powered dynamic microphone end address dynamic microphone phantom powered yes so this is very easy to do i've got a video for you before i show you that video keep in mind you can use this trick with the clark technic ct1 hard to find i know but you can use this trick i am mostly positive in a handheld mic so you you could literally take the xlr out of the bottom of a handheld mic clip those wires rig the wires up to the ct1 slide in screw in good to go i'll show you what i'm talking about let's roll the footage all right so the first thing we're going to do is take the clark technic ct1 and we're going to take the screws off of the casing to see what we have here what is under here is it as easy as sliding the casing off and then we've got pcb board we've got the internals or is there more to it so we're going to take the top screw out then we're going to take the bottom screw out i didn't fast forward through these because it was two quick screws and i'm kind of excited about this first part so let's get that screw out of there and then see what we got you can literally just slide the xlr out of the casing and that reveals everything that makes this work the casing is just the casing no bells no whistles easy as heck to take this apart two screws and you have the internals to a mic booster take a look at the pcb board there then we've got the microphone we're going to go ahead and take the screws out of it as well three screws only get those out and then we can reveal the internals of the microphone 10 bucks on amazon easy to take apart piece of cake but i couldn't get everything apart from there so i had to take the screw out of the xlr port again easy then once we remove that screw and you pull the microphone apart then you get the tiny pcb board out of there now we have to get the capsule out of the head basket of this ten dollar microphone again two simple screws piece of cake we take those out quickly very quickly to reveal the small crappy capsule just your run-of-the-mill ten dollar internals it, it, there's nothing special about this microphone whatsoever i didn't even test it or do anything with it there's no use so we've got that out we'll throw that away now we have an empty shell of uh of a microphone a good shell now we can take the clark technic ct1 internals literally just i sound like rob lowe literally just slide that down in the hole that's what she said and we put a screw in there to hold it and we have our mic booster inside of our shell go ahead and put this screw back in there really quickly and we've got the mic halfway done so you could take the xlr off the pcb board but i don't want to do that i want to be able to reuse this easily if i want to take the mic booster out and use it i will so i'm going to use an xlr cable and i'm going to cut this cable and i'm going to use the male end of this cable 
and run it directly into the CT1 mic booster. So a little clip of the cord with a pair of skizzers and we will be close to rolling. We'll cut that off at an angle. That way we can strip back the rubber and get a good look at everything before we move forward. So don't want a blunt cut on this. I don't anyways. I want to be able to trim that right in the middle and just peel that back like a sweet, big old fat, girthy banana. Big, fat, sweet, girthy banana. So we got a lot of wires here. Of course, you've got your, your hot is in there. And if you just look, just look at it. Would you look at it? The copper is a ground. The thread is just your general filler for this cable. But if you line up the pins to where the wires are, you'll be able to find the hot and cold pretty easily. But now we click in the XLR to the mic booster, which had the female end already. We got to make sure we got enough room for everything plus the capsule. And I think that we will, and we can get to soldering. My favorite part, man, soldering wires. So this right here is going to be the hot. I'm using a PVM uh 44 a pv pvm 44 capsule i think it's a 44 it was on the thing with the q8 and i'm gonna solder this xlr connection to this capsule i think it sounds good enough it's solid and i needed something to use and and this one is one of the mics i've had a hard time selling so we're going to wire up the capsule to the pv and that's going to be the element that we use wired up to the Clark Technic CT1. Now we're going to do the other wire. This is the non-hot, the non-red wire. We're going to solder that into the other side of the cap. So it really is pretty easy once you grab a soldering gun and just go for it. Now we've got the capsule mounted to the XLR cable. So we are almost there. Very, very close to having our own phantom powered dynamic end address broadcast microphone. If you want to call it that, I'll call it that. We just insert our XLR, clickety-clackety. We have a, a working unit that we just now need to put back together. So we're going to take the head basket. We're going to shove that capsule up in that big old red spot. That's what she said. And screw everything back together and get going. Now, this capsule, you can't use a very big capsule. This is a pretty standard, I want to say, 32, not even 32, probably 28, 29 millimeter capsule. There's not much room, at least on this $10 mic body, to go bigger, as you can see. So I have to kind of shove it down in there. There was some fabric wrapped around the capsule that, that just made me have to go back and forth, you know, teeter-tottering in there. But once we get the capsule in there, our wires are thick and strong enough, and the XLR cable, it's, it's going to hold the capsule up in there. It's not going to go anywhere. Put the screws back in. See a kid in the background. I think it's mine. And we've got a reassembled phantom powered mic boosted end address dynamic microphone. There you go. Now we've got this microphone. It's in front of me. The mic booster is enabled. I've got phantom power on my Rodecaster Pro. The level is at 19. Uh, before doing that, it was at 38 to get this decibel level out of this microphone so here's the thing much like my mic canister this is going to be regarded as ridiculous or genius yet again yet again it's one or the other and really it's just about fun and the ct1 even though it's small i still don't like using multiple xlr cables to splice that in there i also don't like having the ct1 sticking out of my mic's xlr port i don't like the stress and the strain because the ct1's kind of heavy as is the cloud lifter i don't like having that stuff in my audio chain so theoretically if i have three dynamic mics that i really like and i don't plan on moving away from anytime soon that i could implement the ct1 in as a built-in mic booster why not I mean, you can get the CT1 for 25 bucks used when you find it. You can get it for 30-ish, 30, 32. And if you've got microphones that you like dynamic-wise, why not? Why not cut that out of your chain of command there and it just be built into the mic? It's, it's a really just kind of more fun than anything. But at the same time, Aston did it. 
And everybody thought that was genius. And it was kind of, but we can do it too. All we need is a Clark CT1, or I imagine an SE Dynamite has that similar thin profile that you can just shove into a, a microphone, just replace the existing XLR port in it. But this, this is going to be perfect for someone that's got a crappy interface, maybe an older interface that just doesn't power dynamics without a high noise floor. You can replace the internals with the CT1, get your noise floor down, crank your gain up halfway instead of 100%, and turn the phantom power on, and you're good to go. So not to mention, I, I, I think it sounds better, this, this microphone. It sounded good with the Q8 in the video I did with those two mics, but I think the CT1 gives it just this tiny little bit of color that sounds better than it did. So I'm pretty happy with this build. I think it's fun. And again, you can take the CT1 and do this with anything. A handheld, your favorite handheld, uh, Behringer XM8500. You could just take the XLR out, put the CT1 in, a couple soldered wires, and and really it, it's, it's almost that simple. So tell me what you thought of the do-it-yourself homemade Phantom Power Dynamic End Address broadcast microphone. Do you think it's a good idea? Crazy idea? Have I lost my mind? I think we've established that I have, but the point of this is fun. Fun and practicality. I no longer have a CT1 in my mic chain from here to the Rodecaster Pro. It's not somewhere on the floor connected with two cables. It's not sticking out of the back of my mic. It's not sticking out of the back of the Rodecaster Pro. It's inside the microphone. And I just think that's a cleaner, simpler setup. And after you're done, you just feel good. You just feel good. That's what she said. You just feel great about yourself because you did something fun and productive. And you can tell all your buddies, I made my own phantom power activated dynamic microphone. And you'll never guess where the mic booster is. Scare Mics, thanks for watching yet again. See you guys next time on, I already said that. Peace out.